underneath the sidewalk, you see, it didn't really matter what race you were. And this is where I learned a lot about their lives. Some had been forced to go to residential schools. Others, their parents had refused to allow them to go to residential schools, and we went to school together. And um, so there'd be a lot of us here, maybe eight or so. My brother was just six, so he's just little when we first started doing this and chatting at night after supper and running around when it was slightly dark. People were here mainly in the, um, in the summer. They would generally leave. By the 1st of October, they'd be all gone. So this would take place mainly in the summer. So it was here that, that I heard first the Northern Protocol. <laughs> I acknowledge with respect the Simpson First Nation in whose traditional territory we are. And I used that everywhere I went for a very long time after that. And now I hear it used enough that I'm satisfied that it has gotten through. The fundamentals of the Niska Treaty, I heard here from Rod Robinson. Rod later went to the university and became an Anglican priest, but he was also a leading light in the Niska Tribal Council, which led to the Niska Agreement. And I think if anyone had seen our little group here, they would have thought, those kids are never going to amount to anything. <laughs> Well, we all did very well. And I think maybe these evening meetings here in this place, in that long ago time, was very influential in my later career and all that I undertook, and certainly in my attitude that I have uh, tried to express through all the things I have done, through the political life, back in the day of uh, of the, I was a broadcaster, private broadcaster, and the, um, the Niska Tribal Council phoned me one day and said, we're all down here in so-and-so hotel, bring your microphone down, we are setting up our plan, <laughs> we're going to move. And years and years later, of course, Frank Calder and Mr. Justice, Tom Berger, who did so much to lead the Niska through all these trials, the great Tom Malloy, negotiator, federal negotiator, and Rod, and Joseph Gosnell, and James Gosnell, and so many others. And my friends Ruby and Verna from Port Simpson, whose father was Wiesakes, the famous chief, who told us the stories of raven, wolf, bear, and eagle, and orca, and we knew all the stories of the river, and uh, they made a deep impression on me. Other children were learning nursery rhymes and I was learning Medik, the mystic bear, and all the rest of them. So it did influence what I did subsequently many times. Later on, after my political life, working to create the Fraser Basin Council, working to make sure that it included local government, federal government, provincial government, First Nations government as equals, equal partners in the development of that facilitative body, decision-making with regard to water sustainability in this province in the Fraser Basin, which stretches, as you know, all the way from Mount Robson on the Alberta border, right to Prince George, and then down through the, the whole Fraser Valley. So I've had an association with this river, the Skeena River, the Slough, and with the Fraser as well, the two great rivers of our province, and with the Niska, of course, the Nass River, which is theirs, and always will be with their home since time immemorial. The Niska, in 1913, had a big um, delegation go to England to present their first treaty proposal to, to the British government. They came home, and of course, then the laws were passed that there should be no aboriginal political organizations, uh, there should be no <coughs> um, activity on a political front, they were not allowed to vote. 
So they used to begin every meeting with the opening chorus of, Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. And those meetings <coughs> led ultimately in 2002 to the final agreement. In January of 1976, as Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Indian Affairs, I was able to bring the minister then, Judd Buchanan, to the Niska Senior Village of Ianch, where the federal side of the negotiations were opened. Later on, in 1990, Mr. Van de Zandt, Premier of British Columbia, entered British Columbia into the agreement. As you know, the final agreement was uh, launched in the early 2000s, but by 1998, we knew that there was going to be a Niska agreement. It was born out of these lands and this place, and so many of them remember Alvin McKay, also from the Nass River, who went on to become principal of his school. So many. And they all came out of this kind of place. So this is it, a sacred place for me. Sad. Yes. But they're mostly all gone. But here comes the train. Train and trade and commerce. We have to get Costco to the, all those stores. We have to get everybody into those malls. We've got to make sure people spend their money if they have any. There's a blue jay, Stellar's jay, provincial emblem. to them as a kid so they would they would start at one end and you'd hear them howl and pick up the howl and go all the way down the river and then come up the other side Ha, ha, ha.